One of my favorite things about playing in the key of E major is that you don't actually need to use bar chords. You can just leave the high E and B strings open when playing any chord from that key. And the reason we can do this is really cool. It's because in the key of E major, both the E note and B note exist naturally, meaning they won't sound out of place when played over any chord in the key, while also adding a little extra flavor to your progressions. Now, you might already know this for E major, but what few guitar players do know is that there are actually five other keys where we can make use of this this same trick. All using standard chord shapes you're probably already familiar with. So along with E major, the keys of B major, C major, G major, A major, and D major all have naturally occurring B and E notes in their scales. Now in case you don't already know it and to help you understand the basics, let's go over the key of E major. Real quick before we get started, it's important to note that being able to find the note names on the low E and A strings will be very helpful in this lesson. Also many of these chords are going to have pretty fancy names, but I'll be labeling them as the basic chord that they represent so it's easier for you to remember and actually use. All right, so the key of E major looks like this. All we have to do is take our basic E and A bar chord shapes and modify them so the B and high E strings are open. So this is an E major shape bar chord right here, and all we're going to do is lift our bar off so that the B and high E strings can ring through. So we just don't have a bar anymore. So before it sounded like this. And now it sounds like this. It sounds pretty nice. And then we can do the same thing for an A-shaped bar chord. For example, if we played this B major chord, we could just remove our fingers so that the B and E strings were open. And I would just shift these so that it looks like this. Just like that. If you don't know how we come up with the chords in a key, like which are major, minor, etc., it's not a big deal. You can still watch this video, but I did just do a lesson on chord theory that I'd highly suggest watching after this one. It'll connect all the dots. I'll link that under reference videos in the description. So our first chord in the key of E major is an E major chord, and this chord shape, the open chord shape you already know, already has the B and E strings open. So we're just gonna leave that one as is. Just like that. Next up, we've got F sharp minor. Typically, we play this as a full bar chord, but we want to leave those B and E strings open. Now, the way to play this is very awkward. It's probably worse than the bar chord, so I wouldn't really suggest, unless this is comfortable for you, playing it like this. I can't even really do it consistently. What I do is I sneak my thumb around the top like this to fret the low E string so that this chord sounds like this. But that might not be possible for everyone, so if you cannot get your thumb over to fret that, you can just mute this low string. Even though it's the root note of this chord, you don't actually need it in the chord for it to sound good because we have another F sharp note up here. And that's gonna be the case for all of these chords where you see me using my thumb. You can absolutely find a different way to fret that chord or you can just not fret it at all. It's still gonna sound great. So you can hear with the thumb. But if I play without, it still sounds like the correct chord. Next up, we've got G sharp minor, exactly the same shape here, or muted, just like that. Now, next up, we go to an A major for our fourth chord in the key. And again, I like to play this with my thumb, but this one's a little easier, the major chord shapes, if you do just wanna put that finger down, right, like that, or you can just mute it, not a big deal. Still gonna sound pretty good. Alternatively, at this point, we can actually play this chord up here as just a regular A major chord with the B string open, right? Because the E string's already naturally open. This would just be like an A sus2 chord. You might already know it as. Just like that, right? But for the sake of what we're learning now, we're gonna play it up here. For B major, our fifth chord, exactly the same thing, just slid up two frets. And then we got C sharp minor for our sixth chord, back to that minor chord shape. Again, the awkward one that kind of requires the thumb. And then we're gonna be leaving out the seventh chord in all of these keys. The seventh chord is a diminished chord. It doesn't really get used in a lot of chord progressions like diatonic chord progressions. So don't worry about it. It's just gonna kind of make things more confusing. Um, but what we can also do is play these chords in a slightly different way, in a different position if you want. So I showed you that A already. 
but we can keep going with our B. So rather than playing it up here, we can play it down here and just play what basically looks like a power chord. We can play it just like that. Totally works. C sharp, we don't even have to make any variations to make it a minor chord because typically we'd have that down on the B string, but we can just have it open. And totally works. And then we can even go all the way up here to an E. And we're just playing the same shape again. I will have diagrams for all these keys and their chord shapes for you in the PDF booklet that goes along with this lesson over on my Patreon. So if you want to download that, you'll find a link down in the description. Next, we'll look at the key of B major. This one looks a lot like E major, so the shapes are very similar. So our first chord in the key of B major is B major. And for this key, the shapes are going to work best when they are rooted on the low E string. So here is our B major. Then we go up to C sharp minor for two, all the way up here for D sharp minor for three, and then all the way back down to E major for four, F sharp major for five, G sharp minor for six, then we're skipping our seventh chord and resolving on our one chord, our B major. And if I were to play a chord progression using these chords, sound beautiful together. Just like all the other keys we'll look at, any combination of these chords in any order is going to be a chord progression in the key of B major. Next, we've got the key of C major. You're probably familiar with all the open chords you typically would use in this key, but we can get some extra flavor by using bar chord shapes with the open B and E strings here as well. So because of where the B and E notes sit within the key of C major, I like to keep these shapes all on the low E string. So that means that we're going to start by playing a C major chord by playing a C major bar chord shape, but all the way up here rooted on the eighth fret. Okay, like that. You can also play with the thumb. It's perfectly fine. Then we're going to continue up to play a D minor for our second chord. Okay, then we go to an E minor. Now we can keep going up if we want, or we can go all the way back down because this one's still going to incorporate the open strings, right? Then we go to an F major, G major, and then an A minor. It sounds really cool, kind of very mysterious. So if I were to play uh, a similar chord progression, Sounds pretty neat. The key of G major is next. And for this one, I want to change it up a bit. We're going to use some more interesting shapes. You can obviously use the standard bar chord shapes that we've been using up to this point, but I like these ones a lot. So these shapes are all going to be rooted on the A string instead of the low E string. And we're actually going to be using C shapes. So rather than using the E and A shape bar chords as our base, we're going to be using C shapes. A lot of this stuff that you're learning is actually kind of coming from caged, right? So Instead of starting on the G, this is going to make sense once we get there, but we're actually going to start from the fourth chord in the key just because it's the furthest this way. So we're going to start on our C major chord. And what we're going to do is it's going to be exactly as a normal C major would be, but that B and E string got to be open. So we're just going to take that finger off. So our first chord is going to look like this. Okay, then we go to five chord, which is a D major. So this shape stays the same. Then we go up to an E minor. So we make one small change. We just move this finger down. Then next up, we've got our seven chord, which we are just going to skip for the time being. OK, so we're going to skip that one. We're going to go straight to our G major, our one chord, our two chord, and our three chord. Now you can play that three chord if you want all the way down there as well before getting back there. But you can hear that these chords work pretty well together. Just 
just a little bit of a different sound to a typical like one, five, six, four progression. Now, one extra thing I wanna show you is if you want, you can actually add the fifth, which is one of the intervals inside of these chords below. So we can actually play this shape instead with this note on the low E string. And it's still gonna be a C major chord. So it's still rooted on this or represent a C major chord. It's still gonna be rooted right there, but we've got this low note now. We can do the same thing for all the other chords. We're gonna skip that F sharp. Just like that. The key of A major next, and we're back to our original shapes here. All right, first up, we've got an A major. So we're gonna go back to this shape right here. Next up, chord number two, we've got B minor. Then we've got C sharp minor. Then after that, we've got a D major. Then we've got E major. Then our sixth chord, F sharp minor. Skipping the seven chord and resolving on our A. So if I were to play a chord progression here, Last up, we've got the key of D major, and same thing, we're just using E and A bar chord shapes while leaving the B and E strings open. The first chord in D major is D major, and just like some of the other keys, I actually prefer to keep this one all on the low E string, rooted on the low E string, just so that it keeps um, the third of the chord in the chord shape, in each chord shape. Um, some keys work really well to have them rooted on the A string. This is just one of those ones that works better on the low E string. So that means putting our D all the way up here, rooted on the 10th fret, is that same bar chord shape. Like that. And then we can go up to our E minor, or down to an E minor. We're gonna probably go down here for this one. Then next up, we've got F sharp minor. G major, A major, B minor, and then back to D major. So it sounds like this. All right, so if you made it through the video but still don't understand where we're getting the chords from for each key, you should go watch my chord theory video that's linked in the description. If you do understand all that and you're wondering what to watch next, I'd suggest my lesson on five really cool and unique chord progressions you have to try at least once. I'll put a link to that up in the middle of the screen for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.